Ha, so what we're going to do is we're going to make this thing, which is a heat pipe. Now, heat pipes are amazingly useful things and incredibly efficient. We'll go through them on the board in a minute and how they work, and then what we'll do is we'll make a heat pipe. So a heat pipe is really just a bit of pipe, and you stop it at one end, fill it full of fluid, drive a vacuum, and then stop the other end. And that's all there is to it. It's really, really simple. Now, this fluid is uh, appropriate to the conditions that you want to use it. In um, solar collectors, that's just water. They just put water in there. You can use methanol, you can use ethanol, you can use acetone. There's a whole load of things that you can put in there as that fluid. But what's important is that that fluid doesn't all boil away. So depending on the length of your heat pipe, you need to put enough fluid in there so that it will evaporate, but not all boil away. There has to be a bit of fluid left over. Um, they use ammonia for this as well, incidentally. Uh, ammonia works at a lower temperature, but you would use aluminium. So the fluid that you use and the metal that you use have to be compatible to each other and they have to be appropriate for the job that you're actually doing. They also use liquid sodium, incidentally. Uh, it's used in space applications and aluminium. Um, we're going to make one out of copper and water, essentially. Now, when you make this thing, you stop it off the bottom end, heat it, and that water will basically boil. And when it boils, it will drive out all of the air and fill that air, that space, with steam. Once it's done that, you put the cap on, solder it, and then when that steam recondenses, really the whole thing gets cold, you'll get a vacuum in here, which is exactly what you want. Now, it's driving out the non-compressible gases, the oxygen and the nitrogen in the air. It drives it out, leaving water vapour, which is compressible. When it um, condenses, drops back into water. Now, it works because when you heat this end, obviously what happens is it's under vacuum, so it will um, boil at a lower temperature. It will vaporise, and that act of boiling will suck the heat, if you like, out of this end, out of this area, and it will rise up to here. Once it gets up here, it's cold and it'll condense. Condensing gives out heat. So this area will get cold, taking its energy from the heat source that you're supplying, and this area will get hot. If you surround this area with a heat sink, water, then it will heat the water up. Eventually, it will reach the same temperature. So this temperature and this temperature will be the same. Now, because it's evaporating up like that, it happens very, very quickly. It happens much more quickly than if you just heated a copper pipe. And just heating a copper pipe would not be as efficient as this. This happens really quickly. So it's very, very cool for that transfer of heat. Now, when it's in this arrangement, obviously the water can condense and just drip back down. There's no real problem. So this one has to be done at an angle. You can't put this flat like that. If you put it flat like that, it won't work. It has to be at an angle so the water can drip back down. Now they solve that problem by putting a wick in there. Something that will, by capillary action, remove the condensed uh, vapour, the liquid, back from the top down to the bottom reservoir. So sometimes you see a heat pipe containing a fluid, a pipe material and a wick. The one we're going to make, which is the one that's used in most solar installations, is just a piece of copper pipe with some water in the bottom and that's all there is to it. Now I'm going to make mine out of 15 mil pipe and a couple of stop ends. You sometimes see them like this, where that end is the end that gets hot. And when you see a solar installation and you see this big old tank and it's got something like that running down it, sun hits here where your heat pipes are, the heat pipes is coming into the water where the bulb is and heats your water tank. So when you see these kind of solar installations, that's what's actually going on with them. Anyway, we're going to make a heat pipe now. Okay, so I've taken a length of the ordinary copper pipe you find in the Dewey cell stores. It's about 90 centimetres long and stently and soldered a stop end on the end of it. If you're not too good with soldering, you could always use a compression fitting. Now, this will work upright, remember, or at a slight angle because it's a gravity return. Uh, if I put a wick in there, then I could put it where I wanted, but I'm not, not going to bother with that. No need. Don't use it in solar installations. Don't really want to bother. Now, I don't know how much fluid to put in here. So I'm just going to guess, I'm going to put about 25 millilitres in there and essentially see how it goes. Now I'm using my new super duper heat transfer fluid. I haven't got a clue how it's going to respond. I suppose I ought to build another one which just contains water and do a comparison between the two. And I suppose there's loads and loads of things I could do. But I'm just going to put this fluid in here. About 20 millilitres comes to about there. Then what I have to do is heat the bottom until the steam comes out the top. Now when that happens, what I'm going to want to do is push on the stop end and solder it. 
I need to solder that while the steam is still coming out. So that's going to have to be soldered upright. And um, that means really you have to prepare it. Now, preparing copper for soldering is not too difficult. It's all about being clean. You've got to make sure that everything's cleaned well. So a good old rub over with some wire wool will clean the end of your copper and then you put some flux on it. So all those people who do this a lot will tell me to use a flux brush because God knows what's in flux. I just smear it on with the end of my finger. Same thing with the stop end. You've got to get the stop end ready before you start doing everything else because you won't have time once the thing's actually running to try and do it. Okay, so there's only me here at the moment, so what I've done is I've put this bit of wood here because this is 90 centimetres long and I need to solder it. If I put that bit of wood there and hold that there, it's going to hold the pipe in place. Because once I heat this and start steaming and I try to solder that on, it's going to want to pop off. So I need some way of holding it. Now when we practiced this yesterday, Steve was stood there with a screwdriver holding the top on. It's only me at the moment, so I've had to devise some way of doing that. Now the next bit is really simple. All you have to do is heat the pipe until it begins to boil and steam. Then once it's boiling and steaming, you put the cap on. Now it might get hot, so I've also got a bit of a cloth to hold that pipe with if it gets too hot for me to hold it. So just heat the bottom and the steam will come out. You don't have to worry about desoldering it because the water has to boil off first before it begins to desolder. So once you see the steam coming out there, you pop the tap on, cap on, sorry, pop it under there so it holds it flat, and then solder it. Because you're soldering upside down, it's going to be a little less. We have a convenient heat source here. It's just a fan heater. It's chucking about uh, out about 86 degrees, incidentally. We put that there and then measure the temperature at the top here. All right, starting off 12 degrees, 15 now. 22. So it goes up pretty quickly actually. Now if we try with a similar length of just ordinary copper pipe. <laughs> and you have that a few minutes, it's just not moving, the pipe's freezing. So it's really efficient at moving temperature from hot to cold very, very quickly and stunningly easy to make.